defense in terms of portability, yeah. cost, mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that, but they served to, to give a potential to the owners. But we also thought that people were putting far too much emphasis on these credentials, because if they just interviewed the person for five minutes, they would know more about what that person knew or didn't know than, than relying on these pieces of paper. Yeah, yeah, so the, the problem of matching your degree or you know the certificate with your competences. Yeah. So we were talking about yeah, we this about and you that. get a position because you got the degree or whatever. <laughs> and and maybe you're not able to um, you know my, really my, my, my personal case here is, is, a, is a good example because all of my qualifications are from England. But I wanted to work in Spanish universities, it didn't it wasn't good enough. So I couldn't just get Spanish authorities to recognise my English um, certificates. That's not done. You get them recognised at a European level. Mm. Paying, huh. and then the Spanish people look at the university level, and then they recognise the European. I have to pay again. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Um, it's interesting. One of the things uh, we see with group, uh, one of the things we alluded to in the presentation, so we didn't talk about a lot. We didn't talk about quality of the learning and the reputation mm -hmm. of the issue. The Spanish don't trust the British for good reason. Many good reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then there's not much a credential can do about it. Um, if the, now on the other hand, um, if you are willing to trust the British on the certain conditions, um, then there's a lot of credential can do about it. Uh, it's also when you get into the same thing for the quality of the learning. We had the slide up before that we were like, listen, these are the elements of uh, a credential statement. So these, you need all of these. You need to have a certain quality of learning. You need to have certain learning outcomes. But at one point in the project, we were playing around with the concept of inherent quality of learning, and we decided to kick it out because uh, we descended way too low to philosophy. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, there's always this element. What is the quality of the learning that the credential represents? But the person who evaluates that is the employer. Is your learning good enough for my purposes? Is the issuer who taught it to you, do I trust him enough to take a decision? All the credential is, is a facilitating document for that process. Um, we put this here, and everything we do is important to understand that it is an add-on to existing quality assurance, and add-on to all the systems there are for learning, etc. But our argument was that you could have a top university issuing you a worthless certificate and it wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference to your ranking. I'll come to you in a second. There's so to repeat for other people. And the example of that was the early days of MOOCs. Here you have Harvard and MIT issuing you with certificates of participation in MOOCs, which especially at the beginning were not worth the paper they were printed on. But they came from Harvard. Now imagine some 14-year-old uh, student from a deprived community trying to figure out the recognition status of that. Yeah. Uh, not uh, realistic. So this is some of the areas we go into where, where we think about these things. But you wanted to say something, yeah, sorry. I, I, wanted, no, yeah. I, I wanted to add that this is also very true with all the, the, the degrees yeah. and masters and whatever uh, diplomas that are delivered by universities. Mm -hmm. yeah. for, this, for a certain time, you are able, in fact, to because there is nothing special, uh, say, uh, okay, yeah, uh, master in physics or what, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. But but you do not know exactly about the exact content of the courses mm -hmm. that were followed and and uh, um, let me see, uh, rich, um, passed yeah. by the, the owner of the bag, of the diploma. Yeah. For a certain time, this is uh, able. To, you are able, in fact, to link to the uh, reglement. Yeah. Yeah. But after ten years. Yeah. 20 years, I mean, all these rules for a certain faculty or department, they have changed. Yes, they are did we, we did, uh, If there is the micro or supplement, the details, what you achieved uh, in certain subjects, is more than just the paper. Oh, uh, oh yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was one step yeah. ahead. I, yeah. I don't say yeah. the final solution is there. Mm -hmm. But after so 10 years, years. <coughs> after 10 years, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah, right. After 10 years though, um, we kept this presentation to quality of education because our focus is education. But Wolf showed a slightly different diagram earlier where he showed the entire spectrum of credentials. 
letters of recommendation are effectively a slightly different type of education or credential. ID employer recommends Florian, who has worked with me for 10 years, and the Golan who works for 10 years, who was responsible for this, 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 and this. They might not explicitly write skills and learning outcomes, but effectively they are. And an employment certificate uh, or a letter of recommendation from an employer after 10 years is probably far more valuable than your degree at that point. So, five more minutes, right? Um, so, in that sense, you could actually take a letter of recommendation and apply, where did they go? And apply all these same criteria to it. And the LinkedIn endorsement, which I think we all agree is worthless, why? Uh, it's not easily shareable outside of LinkedIn. Uh, it does represent a specific skill, but you can't verify, uh, you can't trace and reproduce the conditions by which that happened. And if you just look at this and you want to fix LinkedIn endorsements, this actually gives you a map to do so if you really want to. And in terms of, by the way, have you ever faked a certificate? If you've ever sent an endorsement to somebody who didn't deserve it, you faked an educational certificate. Um, so, uh, one more question to you. Uh, first of all, a quick preview of the afternoon so that you can come back after lunch. Uh, we won't continue on quality of credentials. I told you that this was the more technical uh, uh, dull bit. Uh, within very interesting. I'm happy. Uh, within MicroAG, we've been looking at it a little bit differently. Uh, we've been looking at employer acceptance of credentials. We've lo been looking at this concept of exchangeability. And we've been looking at how this translates into digital tools for the future for credentials. And we've also been prototyping and piloting some tools. So we'd actually, let's say, like to talk to you about the more utilitarian aspect of all of this and how we are trying to translate some of this work into, uh, into let's say, working products. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please come back in the afternoon. Three, um, three fifteen. Yeah. The last question for you on this: um, Do you find this of any use? And if so, for whom? Uh, in the end, we are, let's say, also trying to validate it. We see this mainly, I think, as a use for a very limited set of people, which are basically credential developers. Uh, institutions, private or public, that are creating new forms of credentials, but also for standardization bodies, software companies, etc., who are, let's say, trying to build new media for credentials and new systems of issuing credentials. And what we're trying to build is a framework guide for it. So my question to you is, by taking these three examples and let's say using this framework to analyze them, do you find it has helped you understand the nature of these credentials better? And if not, by the way, feel free to say so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, definitely, if I can add my two chants, uh, we will definitely use this work in, uh, we have an uh, EU project is uh, about uh, virtual mobility, open virtual mobility. We are doing a MOOC and we had the problem that we need to certificate at the very end of the MOOC what are the skills uh, and you know the disposition and whatever you earned by this MOOC and we decided to use the open badges with all uh, the problems that we had before and this is very useful. We will use definitely this you know this slide, <laughs> but also what Alpha said before about the framework and whatever. So, definitely. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.